All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the winter protection of fig trees. And right next to me is one of my fig trees that's planted in the ground. It's called Ronde Bordeaux. It's quite a big tree. And we're trying to protect it throughout the winter time because upcoming in the forecast, as probably a lot of you guys have a very similar thing happening, is that we're seeing very extreme cold temperatures up, uh, upcoming in the forecast. And so I wanted to get this video out to you guys very quickly. I know in the past we have talked about on my blog and other videos that we've done about winter protection of fig trees. But I think this video is really important at least to show you guys and, and demonstrate some of the techniques that I'm doing here on my property in the Philadelphia area in zone 7A. We're going to talk about, of course, this method here, wrapping. I'll show you guys all the little steps of what I'm going through here. We're going to finish this off. It's almost done. We're also going to show you guys uh, a different method of winter protection that I'm doing to most of my in-ground figs. Some I'm actually leaving unprotected completely, like you see this little ruby here. This is a Moro de Caneva called Fico Seco. And so uh, it's a really important thing, and it's really important, I think, to have many options available to you to figure out what's best for you. Um, before we get into all this, so much information is going to come your way, guys, so please stay to the end. But before we get into all this, I'm going to be selling, and I've already sold, actually, excuse me, a lot of fig cuttings. So if anyone's interested, I've done a lot of pruning on these trees. Before we do the actual protection and wrapping or whatever it is that we're going to be doing in terms of winter protection for these figs, it's a good idea to prune them. So if you want to do any pruning now, that's what I've done. And I've listed a lot of the cuttings as I've done now for many years available for sale. There's a link down in the description of this video. You also can go to our blog, my blog, figboss.com. You'll see the store there. There's a link on FigBid and that's exactly where you need to go is on FigBid to see all of my listings. A lot of them already sold out. It's been an amazing sale. I want to thank everybody who's participated. We've been talking about it a lot on the YouTube channel. Um, and so if you want to get some cuttings of really special varieties, kind of now's the chance because there's only a couple weeks left of the sale. We'll also, we're going to be doing a giveaway at some point here on the blog, figboss.com. So go on there, subscribe to the newsletter, and you'll be notified exactly when that giveaway is going to happen. Um, we've already done one giveaway, by the way. So um, stay tuned for all that. So here we go. The wrapping of our fig trees is rather simple. And so we only need a couple, a couple things. First off, we need a tarp. And so you don't need a giant tarp. Obviously you need a bigger tarp, depending on how big your fig tree is. But I'm gonna bring you guys in here a little closer because inside is many, many branches that I have strung up together the best I can. And honestly, I should even try even better to close this gap a bit and make this a bit tighter. I'm sure it's probably a, a bit easier that way. This is definitely a tree at this point that's taller than myself, and it's becoming more and more difficult to protect and wrap. But every year we do some kind of a recycling process. And so some of these trunks here from the base will grow and replace some of the older ones, and we just keep replacing that year after year. Most of the detailed pruning up here at the top, we almost do absolutely none, because if we can preserve as many of these tips and lateral buds as possible on our fig trees, the more fruits that we will get the following season. Um, so it would have been nice to get this all closer together, but I really prefer actually in the growing season is to spread out the trunks and get them more light. And so I guess I could probably spend more time bringing them together. They are more pliable and easier to bend at this point than you would think. And so all I've done is just grab them together, got them together as best I can with twine, and just strung them up. Then I throw the tarp over top. And so there's not really anything more to it than that in terms of the actual wrapping process. So it's pretty straightforward, right, in that sense, is that we're just getting this whole thing together. What I need to do now is I need to get myself more twine. And so we just basically twine this all the way around on multiple heights and I want to get this as tight as possible, as airtight as possible, guys, because what's happening here, why we're doing this, first off, let's talk about that really quickly. Why are we actually protecting this? Well, 
a variety here on my right called Little Ruby and also this variety here called Moro de Caneva are very hardy figs. And so I've talked about in the past, the variety really is critical to your success. And so me, I'm in a 7A. In the forecast, I'm going to be seeing in a couple days, uh, a couple nights actually, is 10 degrees Fahrenheit here. We're also going to see 14, 16, 15, something like that. We're getting a pretty nasty cold spell. 10 degrees, in my opinion, is not that big of a deal for the wood of our fig trees. Now, the container trees, obviously, we got to move them out. Anything below 15, the roots can take damage. And so if we have a tree that's not very hardy, let's say not Little Ruby, let's say not Moro de Caneva, but it's this Ron de Bordeaux, well, then 10 degrees might be enough to damage these tips. And as I said, the tips, the lateral buds on the trees, if those get damaged, we lose them through pruning or through winter damage, we're going to have less fruit next year. It's going to be more difficult for our trees to set fruit. We're going to get less fruit and we're going to get it at a later date. And so for us in these cold places, this is absolutely critical. We need to make sure that we are protecting them at 10 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Now, by wrapping them like this, what we're doing is we're trying to make this airtight. And so although I'm, I'm not finished yet, what I will try to do very soon is put this mulch that you guys see here that I have in this bin, wood chips, leaves, and I'm gonna kinda put this and sprinkle this all around the edges so I can keep the edges of the, the wrapping that I've done really close to the ground so that there's, there's no air getting underneath and then kinda getting up in here. We wanna trap all the heat that's coming up from the earth because the, the earth is a battery, right? There's a heat source. And so if we have a heat source, we need to insulate that heat source. And the best way to do that in the wintertime is to use something like a tarp and insulate it. And so the heat's gonna rise and escape here through the top. But if we can keep everything nice and airtight, we can make sure that we're gonna have better insulation than if there was some air escaping. So I like to throw it around the edges and we're gonna be really careful about, of course, wrapping this super tight with this twine all the way around so that we get really, really good airtight um, kind of contact on the fig tree. So that's kind of why we're doing it and how we're doing it. Um, I would say it's critical for a variety like Rondé Bordeaux, I think 10 degrees. You may be able to go to about, down to about five degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, I think most fig trees are gonna take some sort of damage. And I would say there's a, a very small number of genetics that can withstand something like five degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe you have uh, five or two and a half, let's say two and a half percent of all fig varieties in existence can survive about five degrees Fahrenheit. Now I've over the years accumulated and looked at hundreds of different varieties of figs and I know a lot of people in the area that, that grow figs in colder places like myself. So I've been able to accumulate some really hardy figs figs that will survive five degrees Fahrenheit. And I know which ones will, and I know which ones kind of won't. Um, I also have figs that'll survive about zero degrees Fahrenheit. And that's a very, very small percentage of figs. We're looking at maybe, you know, if, if you have about at five degrees Fahrenheit, two and a half percent of all fig varieties survive that temperature, anywhere from two and a half to 5%. When you go down to zero, you're looking at maybe a quarter of a percent of the varieties that exist can survive at those temperatures, it's pretty low. Uh, you're looking at maybe Hardy Chicago, this little Ruby, maybe Campanieri, maybe this fig called St. Martin. Those are even boasted maybe to survive below zero. And so we have to protect them in some way. And this wrapping here, by producing, making this air tight and insulating this, we might be able to buy ourselves about five degrees Fahrenheit, maybe 10 degrees Fahrenheit, I think 10 is probably a little generous. I will take five. And so if I'm in a, a 6B, let's say, because I'm in 7A, that means we get down to zero, potentially every, well, maybe not every winter, but at the most extreme temperature, we can get down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's negative 17 degrees or negative 18 degrees Celsius. And so, if I can get down to negative five degrees Fahrenheit in a 6B, 
well then something like this wrapping here is going to really put me on the edge to get to that zero number and having a fig at zero is not going to be the end of the world obviously it's going to be um not great but certainly this is going to help my fig tree here in 6b and probably even 6a if we're lucky in most seasons get through that particular winter time and so what i would also recommend i mean it's not just about wrapping them obviously but planting them here on the southwest side of your house next to the house uh other you know sources of thermal heating right this uh this house is radiating heat at night and making sure that this area here is a little bit warmer than this area right here and so that's kind of the name of the game there's so many different little tricks and tips and things but that's one method of winter protection now let's say you had a lot of fig trees because this method here of wrapping is time consuming um, it does take a little bit of time you can get obviously pretty good at it it's more difficult for one person but let's say you had a lot of fig trees like myself and so either you plant a hardy fig variety like like some of these that i have and so I have other varieties here that we're not protecting and have survived the winter this past year. But if they're not very hardy, I actually have bent them over towards the ground. So if this was, this isn't a, a this is actually a blackberry, but if I were to imagine that this were a fig, I bent this over here to the ground, staked it to the ground, and then covered it in wood chips. And here's actually some really small stems of a fig tree that I planted right here in this spot. And so if we can basically just protect all of this, here's actually another one right here. And I wonder if this is one that I bent. It is one that I bent. As you can see, here's a part of the stake. And so I need to actually cover this. Let's move some mulch over top of this to make sure that it is gonna survive the winter time. And I should come back and do a little bit of a better job, but just by bending it towards the ground, it's closer to that heat source. And then if we throw the mulch over top, that's acting as a form of insulation. The more mulch we can add on top, the better. One of the critical things though, I think people overlook is, well, wood chips are bigger particles. And so the chances of rot is a lot less. If I were to do this with straw or maybe even leaves although i've had really good success with leaves from my maples and my oak trees here in the property but if it was something like straw and we had continuous amounts of moisture on the branches all winter time i could potentially rot the branches and so one other you know solution to that is obviously not only we want to really pack in that mulch but on top of it we can throw a tarp actually over top of the entire thing and that's just gonna keep the moisture off. It's not really gonna be that insulative unless you can keep it airtight. Like we're keeping the, uh, you know, the, the tree that we're wrapping airtight, that Ron de Bordeaux. One other solution that you can do is you can get yourself something like this. And well, it just kind of broke, but <laughs> we got chicken wire here and there's a stake driven through it. So I cut myself out a piece of chicken wire turned it into a, a ring here and then put a stake through it. And so all you have to do is put this around the fig tree, the branch, and then fill that in with mulch. And then by filling that in with mulch, we're just basically replicating the same thing here that's happening on the ground or the same thing in a way that's happening when we wrapped our fig tree. If you have a smaller tree, it's probably better just to do the ring. It's, it's easier, it's quicker, it's simpler. There's less you can mess up. And so if it's more mature and it's taller and you have to protect it, you can't pile up. <laughs> you probably can't fill in a ring of mulch that's seven feet tall. So your next best option is to wrap it. And I don't even really want to be wrapping these figs. So what will happen is, let's say even this dies or even if I didn't want to protect it and it's not a variety that is very hardy, like some of these are, well then I just bend over some shoots that either are actually maybe even five feet in height, bend them over to the ground, maybe they're a foot in height, and then just cover them. And that way I plop them back up in the spring. We're able to preserve these tips, these lateral buds, and we actually get maybe even some bravas. 
we get a lot more fruit at an earlier date. It's easier to get them. And they're typically at a higher quality. So that's the name of the game here, guys, um, is doing this. It's so critical. Uh, for many years, I didn't wrap any of my fig trees. I didn't protect many of my fig trees. And in fact, I, in the past, if you look at some of my older videos, thought I was protecting my fig trees, when in reality, I really wasn't. And that whole cut and cover method of throwing the straw on top, then throwing the tarp over top, there wasn't enough straw. And the straw was not acting as enough of an insulative material. It was not airtight. We did not have the amount of mulch required to protect those fig trees. And, uh, and then they died. And then by them dying, it is a, a huge struggle in most situations without the lack of light or without having enough light, with having the wrong variety, you just won't see fruit. And this can be a continuous process. Maybe some of you guys have been going through this for 10 years, or five years, I don't know. Um, so this is basically how you, what you have to do here in these colder places. Uh, in general, guys, I wouldn't fret, but this is probably the time now where it's really important to get everything going, everything moving uh, because of these upcoming extreme weather, these extreme colds that we're having. As you can see, I already have all the container figs off of the patio, but I don't really typically move them until I see about something below 15 in the forecast. So now that we've seen something below 15, it's gonna be 10 degrees, all the trees come off the patio. And so that video of me moving them into storage, we'll do that, that'll come out soon as well. But anyway, guys, we're gonna cut this video here and I thank everybody for watching. Uh, please check out some of the listings we have for cuttings. Uh, there's a lot, there's probably, there's a lot of really good varieties left. Um, there's obviously limited options, but there's some really good ones, and I hope that you guys will, uh, will check that out and our blog, and we'll see everybody soon. Thanks for watching this one, guys. Take care.